Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Anumitra Chakraborty. I'm currently a third year resident in the Department of Radiology and Imaging, Northeastern Indira Gandhi Regional Institute of Health and Medical Sciences, Shillong, Meghalaya. My paper is titled Diffusion Weighted Imaging and Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, Predicting Malignancy in Indeterminate Ovarian Tumors. It is done under the guidance of Dr. C. Daniela, Professor and HOD, Department of Radiology and Imaging, Dr. Pranjal Fukan, as, uh, Additional Professor, Department of Radiology and Imaging, Dr. Don Bok Lang Linzer, Associate Professor, Department of Radiology and Imaging, Dr. Caleb Harris, Associate Professor, Department of Surgical Oncology, Dr. Rituparna Das, Assistant Professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Dr. Jaya Mishra, Associate Professor, Department of Pathology. So coming to the background and overview of the disease and the imaging at hand. So out of all the gynecological malignancies, ovarian cancer is the third most common. The most common cancer being cervical carcinoma followed by endometrial carcinoma. However, out of all these gynecological malignancies, ovarian cancer carries the worst prognosis and the highest mortality rate with very low survival rates. The SEER cancer statistics fact sheets say that the relative five-year survival rate is 48% with the median age of diagnosis approximately 63 years. This poor prognosis is attributable mainly to the asymptomatic course of the disease with delayed onset of symptoms and a lack of proper screening modalities. Imaging plays a very vital, crucial role in the management of these patients because it aids in the detection, the differentiation of benign, borderline and invasive malignant ovarian masses, aids in the uh, staging, and in the prognostication of the same. So coming to the various modalities at hand, we have CT, which has a short acquisition time and can take whole body scans very rapidly with minimal artifacts. It has just to detect as well as stage the diseases, but has a limited role in characterization and carries the risk of radiation. Transvaginal ultrasound and contrastional MRI have high sensitivity of 97% and 100% respectively in identifying the solid components within the masses. An MRI offers an overall higher accuracy of 93%. In MRI, diffusion weighted imaging gives us a non-invasive evaluation of the extent of microscopic diffusion within the biologic tissues and can differentiate between the benign epithelial tumors with solid components from the malignant with high sensitivity and specificity. Magnetic resonance spectroscopy gives us information about the anatomy as well as, the helps, as, well as helps to provide a quantification of the metabolic features of the tumor. Combining the MRI, conventional MRI with DWI and MRS findings, to distinguish between the benign and malignant while attempting to give a diagnosis of the histopathological type of the ovarian carcinoma may offer a faster non-invasive means as compared to a tissue diagnosis. So the aims and objectives of this study was mainly to assess the diagnostic accuracy of diffusion weighted imaging, DWI and magnetic resonance spectroscopy in differentiating between benign and malignant ovarian masses. So coming to the methodology, our study type was a prospective observational study it was approved by the Institutional Ethics Committee of Negrims. The sampling population was actually prospective cases of indeterminate ovarian masses who were screened on ultrasound and then underwent an MRI pelvis with diffusion weighted imaging, MRS and contrast enhancement in the Department of Radiology and Imaging at Negrims. And subsequently, the ones who went on to obtain a tissue diagnosis were taken up for the statistical analysis. So finally, a sample size of 40 consenting adult females were ultimately screened on ultrasound and subsequently went underwent the MRI and the histopathological confirmation. The gold standard of our study was the histopathology. So the inclusion criteria included adnexal or ovarian masses who had the following features. Purely cystic masses more than 4 cm in size or solid masses, complex cystic masses or complex solid masses with small or large solid components. We excluded small functional cysts which were less than 4 cm, simple cysts less than 4 cm, endometriomas which were confirmed by any of the diagnostic modalities that included ultrasound, MRI or laparoscopy, adnexal masses who had already done a pre-existing HPE diagnosis like a biopsy were excluded from our study and general contraindications to MR including implants and metallic artifacts etc were already excluded from the study. So the patients who had a clinical suspicion of adnexal or ovarian neoplasms were subsequently screened on the ultrasound. Out of them, 40 patients were selected with indeterminate lesions satisfying the inclusion criteria. The, they underwent a contrast enhanced MRI with DWI and MRS using the Siemens 1.5 Tesla Magnetom Avanto MR scanner in an institute. 
The mean ADC values of the solid and the cystic components were measured. For the MRS, the spectral reconstruction was done with the aid of the software at the workstation of the MR device. Additionally, all the conventional MRI uh, uh, sequences were also obtained. The images were all analyzed in the presence of a senior radiologist. And for the gold standard, the patients underwent biopsy or surgical interventions followed by HPE diagnosis. And finally, the statistical analysis was done on the SPSS version 22 software. So coming to a few of our cases, the first case was a 52 year old female who was diagnosed as a case of serous cystadenoma after imaging and HPE. So the imaging showed this is the T2 weighted axial image, the T1 weighted axial image, the T1 weighted post contrast fat suppressed axial image. We can see the multi loculated uh, cystic pelvic right adnexal lesion with some thick septation having intermediate signal on the T2 weighted imaging. The deficient weighted image, the trace deficient image showed no evidence of uh, high signal in that corresponding solid component and the ADC map did not reveal any reduced uh, values or restricted diffusion. The multivoxel magnetic resonance spectroscopy that was done with a TE value of 135 showed a NAA peak and a lipid peak with a lactate inversion. However, there was no elevation of the choline or the creatine and the choline creatine ratio was low. The HP images that we have included here include the 40x and the 200x hematoxylin eosin stain slides. And we can see the papillary projections, multiple papillary projections, and we can see a single layer of ciliated columnar epithelial cells lining the same. So our second case was a 45-year-old female who we diagnosed as a serous cystadenocarcinoma. So this is the T2 weighted axial image, the T1 weighted axial image, the T1 weighted post-contrast fat suppressed axial image. And all three show a complex abdominal pelvic lesion with enhancing solid portion and cystic spaces and ascites. This is a trace diffusion image showing intermediate signal and the ADC map showing low values on ADC meaning restricted diffusion in the solid component. The multivoxels mag magnetic resonance spectroscopy done with a TE value of 135 showed a choline peak, no creatine peak. There was an NAA peak, lactate inversion and a lipid peak. Uh, the choline creatine ratio was high. The 40x uh, HND and the uh, 200x HND slide images showed multiple papillary projections with uniform population of small cells with scanned cytoplasm and mild nuclear atypia. Our third case was a 55 year old female who we diagnosed as a case of mucinous cystadenoma based on the imaging and the HP. So, this is the T2 weighted fat suppressed sagittal image, the T1 weighted fat suppressed axial image and the T1 weighted post contrast fat suppressed sagittal image showing a complex cystic mass abdominal pelvic lesion with enhancing wall thick wall and thick septa the diffusion weighted imaging and the ADC map showed no significant restricted diffusion the MRS at TE 135 value showed an NAA peak and no other significant metabolite peaks were noted the 40x and the 200x HND slides showed a cystic neoplasm with uh, multiple cysts and glands and papillary projections lined by a single layer of bland mucinous epithelium. The fourth case was a 27 year old female diagnosed as mucinous cystadenocarcinoma. This is the T2 weighted fat suppressed axial image, the T2 weighted uh, non fat suppressed axial image, the T2 weighted coronal image showing a complex cystic abdominal pelvic lesion with uh, solid components ascites the diffusion weighted imaging and the adc maps showed restricted diffusion with low adc value in the solid portion the multivoxel spectroscopy at a te value of 30 showed a choline peak a lipid lactate peak high choline creatine ratio there was no naa peak in this patient the 40x hnd slide shows a multiple tumor cells reaching up to the capsule and the 200x uh, image we can see some glands with mucin secreted in between and stromal invasion with papillae, atypical, moderately pleomorphic stratified cells. So coming to the results, we have summarized them in graphs and charts. So we had a total sample size of 40 and out of them, 27 turned out to be malignant, 13 turned out to be benign. In the malignant group, uh, almost 10 had mixed composition and in the benign group, 10 had cystic composition. These were the normal parameters that we took into consideration, the margins, the wall, septa, vegetations, solid portions, ascites, deposits, lymphadenopathy, pelvic organ involvement or sidewall involvement and intermediate signal of the solid component on T2. So in the malignant group, we saw that nearly 20 had irregular margins, 
22 had thick septa, uh, 16 had thick wall, and 23 had intermediate signal. In the benign group, also we noticed that 9 had uh, intermediate signal on the T2 weighted imaging. Other parameters were not so significant. Moving on to the other uh, statistical slides, we can see the uh, ADC values we have taken here, the trace, uh, trace diffusion image. We saw the intermediate signal in nearly 22 of, of malignant cells and uh, in four of the benign cells. And the T test that was done for the equality of means showed a p-value of 0 0.001, which was significant. In the malignant group, the mean ADC value was 0 0.809 plus minus 0 0.054 with a standard deviation of 0 0.283 median of 0 0.805 and a confidence into 95% confidence interval of 0.697 to 0.921. The benign group had a mean ADC value in comparison higher of around 1.511 plus minus 0.153, standard division of triple, 0 0.555, a median of 1.685 and a confidence interval as here. And these are the box uh, whisker plot that showed the dif significant difference of the median values of the uh, malignant and the benign groups with a negative skew in the benign group. So regarding the metabolite peaks, uh, choline peak was seen in nearly 23 of the malignant lesions. Lipid peak was seen in 16 malignant lesions and lactate in 18 of the malignant lesions. Creatine peak was seen in only 4 of the malignant lesions but not seen in any of the benign lesions. The choline peak showed the highest sensitivity of 85.2% with a specificity of 92.31% in the malignant group and the Fisher exact test showed a p-value of less than 0.05. The creatine peak showed highest specificity of 100% and the highest positive predictive value of 100% but had a low sensitivity of 14.81%. In the malignant group, the choline creatine integer ratio mean ratio was around 2.86 which was significantly higher than the mean ratio of the benign group which was 1.052 uh, with 95% confidence intervals as given here, median of 2.97 in the malignant and 1.010 in the benign groups respectively. So coming to the uh, statistical test that we employed in the spectroscopy findings, the creatine peak showed a significant uh, correlation with a significant relationship with the malignant group with p-value of less than 0.05. Choline also showed statistical significance. However, NAA, lipid and lactate did not show much significance. In the test of normality, we found that the choline creatine ratio had a, a higher significance, statistical significance in the malignant group with uh, without with relatively poor uh, no significance in the benign group and in the uh, source tests in the choline creatine ratio we found a p-value of overall less than 0 0.0001 which was highly significant and if we compare the determination of malignancy by choline creatine ratio and the mean adc values in the solid component we saw a strong correlation with a linear co regression linear relationship in the regression charts the box whisker plots in the malignant and the benign group also showed such a significant difference in the median of the uh, choline creatine ratio in, in both the groups. Comparing the diagnostic accuracies, we found that the sensitivity significantly increased after on addition of the diffusion weighted imaging and the spectroscopy findings to conventional MRI parameters with a peak of 96.3% and the specificity also went on increasing accordingly. The positive likelihood ratio and the negative likelihood ratios improved with the addition of DWI and MRS. However, and the negative predictive value significantly increased with the addition of both DWI and MRS. However, positive predictive value was still the highest in the conventional MRI parameters. Coming to the discussion, our findings in our study corroborated with the find studies done by Wenhua Lee et al. regarding DWI in the uh, ovarian masses. So they said that a strong DWI signal was associated with a solid portion of the tumors while the cystic portion produced a weaker signal. And the lower mean ADC values in the solid component were predominantly associated with malignant ovarian surface epithelial cystic carcinomas, which, was, which were similar to what we found. Uh, a study conducted by Isabel Thomasin Nagara et al. showed that the presence of solid component with intermediate T2 signal at, and high signal intensity at B value of 1000 was associated with a positive likelihood ratio of 4.5 for a malignant adnexal tumor. The DWI signal intensity was an accurate tool for predicting benignity of the complex adnexal masses. Coming to the spectroscopy uh, findings, SA2 et al. said that the identification of a choline peak demonstrated a sensitivity of 89% and specificity of 84% regarding the differentiation of malignant from benign ovarian pathologies. Ma et al. said that uh, choline creatine integral ratio was significantly higher in the malignant groups compared to the uh, benign groups. Values were much higher than what we found in our study. Studies done by Stanwell et al. and Forstner et al. showed that a uh, choline creatine integer ratio of more than 3 
indicated that a tumor was malignant in nature and a value of less than 1.5 implied that the tumor was benign in nature. And finally, the study done by Mansoor SM et al showed that the addition of MRS to the traditional MR imaging increased the overall diagnostic accuracy of the MR modality in the characterization of the ovarian neoplasm and the screening of malignancies. So in conclusion, we can see that the diffusion weighted MRI appears to offer a reliable method to differentiate malignant and benign ovarian pathologies based on the estimation of cellularity in the solid component. Proton magnetic resonance spectroscopy also provides good biochemical information and offers good diagnostic accuracy when screening the different ovarian masses with choline peak and choline creatine ratio being the most reliable parameters. The addition of DWI and MRS to the conventional MRI sequences in the addition in, in the evaluation of adnexal masses greatly increases the diagnostic accuracy. So these were my references. Thank you.